Uh, today we're going to be doing the pages 49 through 68 in the Todd Clear text, and um, we're going to be reviewing those in the comfort of my dorm room. Uh, and I live on the fifth floor of Roncalli, so if you hear uh, Thirsty Thursday shouts or Let's Get Turned, uh, yeah, you can know that's my floor. As we go on from the last two chapters where it identified the increase in the population, where this chapter basically talks about why our incarceration rates are concentrated in certain areas with certain people. One thing that Todd Clear tries to emphasize is that unfortunately uh, it's really depending on where you were born is going to determine your likelihood of getting put into prison. As we go on from the last two chapters where it identified the increase in the population where it, this chapter basically talks about why our incarceration rates are concentrated in certain areas with certain people. So the reason that this uh, this is studied so intently by Clear is because of the fact that while our populations have increased, our crime rates haven't and they've actually gone down in some times. And there's Clear actually cites a few reasons for that. And the first reason is that because they're increasing by incredible rates, which is definitely concerning and so some of the reasons why they're why are why they're increasing um, is is one because of the 1970s when we switched back to the classical model uh, two because of the drug laws that uh, and the war on drugs that the Reagan administration really championed and uh, the first Bush also helped but also in the basically the 90s and the early 2000s with the strengthening and the intensifying of the sentence and the ridiculous um, repercussions for returning offenders even if it's on by a technicality on parole offense um, and it really you know it started back in the 1970s with Nixon and everyone in the Congress <clears throat> was basically recognizing that the fact that uh, the current rehabilitation system that we had in place wasn't being as effective as it as they thought it was going to be and so they took the, uh, the they took back the classical system and they saw data which saw you know crime go down which meant though it worked and they have to continue this for ever and ever um, so you move on from when we go back to the classical model up into the 80s with Reagan and you find that ridiculous laws like a mandatory sentence for you know very small amounts of drugs um, are put in place because it's technically distribution which you know that's that's who the real cause is who they thought was the real cause was the of the drug problem was and so they put in place the mandatory sentence sentencing laws they put in place the school zone laws uh, they put in place uh, the reforms on changing the judicial discretion in sentencing and that's a huge pr uh, precedence that they set by taking the basically the mm -hmm. the judicial power away to say this is how much you get to be sentences by making it a guideline and almost a, a, a standard of which they need to be sentences even on the smallest drug crimes uh, that's what happened in the 80s and the with the drug on the war on drugs so as we move on from the war on drugs we start seeing the the focus on sentencing and returning offenders and violent crimes and all the heightened and intensified sentences that those uh, started to increase and change um, with President Clinton's uh, administration, he introduced something called the Truth and Sentencing Movement, which basically made the you know the sentences in jail instead of getting out on good good behavior in a year and a half or whatever it may be, they they have to serve eighty five percent of their sentences. While it was targeted on violent crimes, it was it was almost set it set another precedence actually, where it for people without you know, the violent crimes or repeat convictions that they were held for a long time past whatever the just punishment would have been. Um, and it started, the, it started the trend that people who did 
you know, sex crimes or very violent and heinous crimes that they would likely not see the light of day again because they would be put away for so so long. Clear mentions that it uh, when these dr dramatic and drastic legal changes happen, um, they are designed to address a problem that when they start changing, when they start uh, happening in the legal system, the problem's already begun to d diminish at this point. And so it, it's almost like they're reactionary when they don't even need to be anymore. Um, so after we have the Clinton Truth and Sentencing Movement, you move on to the uh, the removal and the reform uh, for the for the worst part of parole and and the and things of like that nature. And so basically, what happened uh, after the 1970s is that the under under Reagan and under Clinton and under Bush, they started taking away parole and probation because they wanted to heighten and strengthen their the penal system and they wanted to you know deter and lock away people so that they, they wouldn't help uh, they wouldn't go back and get uh, get involved again. So we're gonna fast forward through the chapter a bit because I don't want to take up all your guys's wonderful Friday nights, um, but we're going to see um, how drug crime is changing uh, the penal system around the 1980s and through the 1990s, um, and how it focuses more on blacks than it does on whites. Um, first things first is that, you know, drug crimes were being prosecuted and incarcerated for much higher than any other crimes um, in the penal system. And one thing that was really particular about this is that the uh, the the places that drug crimes occur are usually in poor neighborhoods, and in poor neighborhoods, the residents in poor neighborhoods are usually black people and the other minorities. Um, and so, while in these poor neighborhoods, the labor markets are very crappy and their choices are very limited, it it requires that the young black males take up drug drug selling to pay the bills to put bread on the table and so that increases the amount of people that are able to be arrested and incarcerated for these crimes in these neighborhoods which is one of the reasons why we have mass incarceration in concentrated areas um, another reason why blacks um, are going in in this time period are going to be incarcerated more is that the crack cocaine versus the powder cocaine laws were very different powder cocaine which is generally used by white and upper class people more because of its expensive nature and its pure penalties were much less for crack cocaine which is the poor less refined and when you know black in the minority class uses it much more and so basically what would happen is that the you know when if you were doing powdered cocaine the penalty would be a slap on the wrist and with crack cocaine it's a hundred times greater it would be prison it would be mandatory it would and basically you know people brought this up in congress they brought it up in the policymakers and it and it failed three different times and it brought to the point clear brings up that it's just it's not not important to policy to the the people for returning criminals people who commit a crime get out and then cr commit a crime again um and this is basically creates a system um where you you become a career criminal you become a permanent prisoner in a crime and when you commit that crime you serve your sentence and you go out with parole and probation and you have to you know abide by these very specific set of rules um, who which are sometimes impossibly hard to follow which in at this time period created another reason for people to go back into prison because of technical you know, failures of their probation, their parole sentences, you know, failing a drug test or simple things that shouldn't get you back into prison but did and which are increasing the prison population, increasing the black male prison population. Chapter also discusses uh, how, how hard it is for someone coming out of prison to get back into regular society because the time that you're usually going to prison is around your, uh, your 20s and your 30s and experts agree that it is some of the most important times in your life is your 20s and your 30s. You gain a social standing. You get you usually find your career at that point. You usually start your family at that point. You create, you know, connections 
and you create uh, this, you know, you, you create your roots, you, you anchor yourself to a community. The reforms are usually created by, you know, the elite who have some sort of moral conscience. It's never people who have actually been locked up, and it's not like the grassroots like other you know, other reform movements have been the Wall Street reform with Occupy Wall Street or the any other like that. It's it's usually someone who's got a public voice and, you know, has a high standing authority because it's difficult for someone who has been in prison, who's got no social standing, who's got no public opinion, who can sometimes not even vote to create reform because they have, they're basically not even relevant anymore. He then talks about how the areas of concentration um, are formed and he addresses the fact that housing in the United States is economically and racially segregated um, that you go to into a neighborhood it's usually one class neighborhood with one race in it um, and so like I discussed before it is usually in the poorer neighborhoods with the lack of a labor market and the lack of jobs and the lack of a steady income and it's usually in those neighborhoods that the black people and the minorities are and so you know, they, it just happens to be that those two uh, factors come together and create a perfect petri dish for drugs and crime because it is the sometimes the only way to get money and bread on the table, and it is sometimes the only stable income. Is that when you have a high incarceration rate in a in an area like you know Tallahassee, Florida, as for example, that he addresses many times, he also you know says that. When this happens in, a, in an area or a community, other social problems come up from it. You know, you know, crime also, you know, crime goes up in this area, obviously, but delinquency goes up. Social and physical disorder, low birth weight, infant mortality, school dropout, it's child mistreatment. So, you know, we're not only, the, the communities are not only getting ravaged by the, the, the prison uh, incarceration that is increasingly more and more each year, but they're getting ravaged by the effects of this as well. The question which I would um, I would actually use as one of my questions, and I'll give you three, and I'm, I think you can probably choose two um, to do, and I think Dr. Morris would agree. But one of his, his one question is, is, what ways does the cycling of young poor men into prison and then back into poor communities affect those communities, especially the quality of life and public safety? And um, my two questions actually... Um, is one is try to identify the underlying social norms and assumptions that we have today that create a state of complacency for our public. Um, the complacency in the fact that we, we don't see positive change in our penal system and in who we incarcerate. Um, you know, our class is focused on this for the entire time we've been in it. And chances are, unfortunately, none of us will go and seek the change that is necessary to change these um, unfortunate facts. Um, so what are the assumptions and the norms and the the realities that our society has that makes this true? Um, and then my second question is, because of the concentration of minorities in the low-income neighborhoods and areas which are particularly black, I wonder, does this mean that our country still has strong enough racial prejudices that forces blacks and other minorities into the poor areas? Um, you know, supposedly racism died and, you know, our civil rights for all, but is, do we still ex have enough of the tensions and prejudices that we force minorities and black people and, and into poor neighborhoods? Um, so those are the two questions.